Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. The wrestling podcast where we review every segment of Raw. And we also give you the rest of the news of the week. My name is Turbo Tony. No special formalities. I haven't had very long to figure it out about how to display my name this week. You're just going to have to live with it, fans. This is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to live with it. It's the way it is. But did I get an interesting way to introduce my co-host? Did I have enough time for that this week? Well, I can. And I will. It's one versus all. Romat Reigns. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. You like that one? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I didn't want to go just Matt Reigns. I thought Romat Reigns would be best. Yeah. So there you go. How do you feel like being, um, you know, the Samoan? I should like stand in the corner and go. Ooh. Ooh. Are you gonna? Are you masturbating your arm right now? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the wrist, like a wrist <laughs> slip. That, that, that's got the far more innuendos than I think we, we can allow at this period. A slip of the wrist. A slip of the wrist, yeah. How are you doing this week, Matt? Yeah, a lot better than I was last time we did this. Yes. So you... I'm no longer suffering with some sort of sickness. Yeah, yeah. One of us are always getting some kind of sickness. I've had, like, dental stuff going over the last couple of weeks as well. So I've been... Yeah, it's been a wonderful through. couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and, you know, with things going crazy, even this week we're recording, like, really early in comparison to the week. You'll find that in the news. Um, so, like, we're just doing this on the rush because Matt's going away for the weekend, so we have to do it now. Yep. Uh, you're going somewhere nice, I, I presume. So like that. Uh, but yes. <laughs> it's sort of like, it's it's kind of like me and about eight other people and the other half are going to, like, it's like sort of the places where it's like this big old house and you just rent it for the weekend sort of thing. Oh, so you're kind of doing the American Pie 2 storyline, right? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. Oh, okay. It has a pool, so we may... We'll probably better throw something out like that. Okay, well, just try not to super glue your hand to your dick, because we all know that happens. I will bear that in mind. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because, you know, that, 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 that doesn't help anyone, all right? Yeah. It makes things inter- <laughs> interesting. It makes things difficult. Yeah, I don't want you coming I back. I won't be able to perform my Roman Reigns wrist slip. Exactly. And I don't want you coming back with, like, you know, a really high voice. You know, that's just the way it is. So. <laughs> Welcome. Let's talk about wrestling, shall we? <laughs> You start talking like a nine-year-old re- reviewing Raw or something like that. So, <laughs> um, tell us our Twitter handle, Matt. What you mean at Talk Wrestle Pod? I do mean at Talk Wrestle Pod. Oh, exactly that's all right then. Mean. We got sent a video this week. We're going to set our fan feedback about the guy we were talking about in London um, a couple of weeks ago, the Dolph Ziggler guy. Um, so that's awesome for that. We'll talk about that in the fan feedback. But tell tell us, they, they say to me, they say, tell us, Tony, what is on this week's show? Well, I'll tell you what, I will tell you. We've got a very short bit of news. As I said, we're only recording this a couple of days um, after our last recording. We're literally recording this about like, a couple of days after Raw. Uh, so a little bit of news, not much. If there is anything that happens over the meantime, of course, we'll cover that next week. We've got a massive fan feedback this week, and I mean a fucking big one. You guys decided to just leave us tons of messages, and uh, you know what? We fucking like answering them, so we're going to answer all of them. There you go. Bam. That's it. Take that. You like Nothing them? left behind. Do you like them apples? Hmm? 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 <laughs> apples. I was just thinking, that, um, what film was it? Jerry's on the Strike Back, where it's just like, applesauce, bitch. <laughs> Or maybe I'm Carlitoing right now. I'm just, you know, eating an apple. Like I spit this. in the face of those who aren't cool. I spit in the face of people who don't like to leave questions on our on our videos. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Take that. Take that, yeah. So big fan feedback for you guys this week, and I hope you guys do enjoy that, obviously. And we have our NXT report card for the second week. We're going to be reviewing some very interesting developmental talent. And of course, as always, the theme of the show, as always, we're going to review every segment of this week's Raw, which is the one straight after Extreme Rules. And I hope you guys did enjoy our review of it, which will uh, be going up in the middle of the week. Uh, you would have seen you would have seen that by now, so hopefully. Why it is. Uh so let's get straight into this, Matt. 
I'm um, talking about American Pie and gluing your hand to your dick. We may as well just move forward um, before. Well, I think we should shift. Yeah, I think we should sort of step away from this and Sh- shameless pay per view plot, right? That's Sh- it. Shameless pay per view plot. Let's get to our news. Not much, but unfortunately, it's very tragic news. Um, legendary, and when I mean legendary, I don't mean that in the in the in the sense of sometimes you have got legendary wrestlers and you have got special legendary wrestlers. I don't really know what to what to, uh, what category yeah. to put them in. Um, and not so much wrestlers, but people involved in the wrestling business as well. And this man kind of fits all those roles. And unfortunately, he did pass away this week. Ticks, yeah, it sort of ticks every box, doesn't it? Yeah. He goes by the name of Vern Gagne. And it's a name that younger fans may not know of. Uh, if, they, if you don't, I strongly recommend that you go do some research on the guy. He was hugely pivotal uh, in the days of professional wrestling. And when you look at the list of people that he trained... That's, that's the one thing with, with Vern Gagne. It's like I was just about to say, it's sort of... Like, with like, I don't know who he is. Oh, but you know Bob Buckland. You know mm. Ric Flair. Mm. Like, Ricky Son's Steamboat. daughter. Ricky Steamboat. Like, all people that he has trained. Yeah. Yeah. And I... sort of, like, you think that Gagne is responsible for so many people even nowadays because he trained them who trained them. Yeah. He, he, bro- he, he you know, uh, he, he, like, as you said, he's almost like the, the, like, almost, you think of Vince McMahon being a godfather of wrestling. He's not really. Vince McMahon Sr. more fits that role. Vern Gagne, I think, is a godfather of wrestling. He's a guy yeah. who, uh, you know, pioneered it in many ways. And um, a lot of the stuff that when you when you hear Vince talk about, about Gagne, um, you talk about, he talks about um, when he was trying to essentially take over the world. A lot of the other promotions pretty much just sat back and let Vince give them the D. Right, Vern Gagne said, "No, I'm going to fight you on this. Uh, I'm not going to let you get away with it, um, and I'm going to give you stellar competition." So Vern Gagne was one of those, one of the only guys to say, "Nah, nah, I'm not having any of this. I'm going to try." And, and man, his legacy is one that that lives on, as you say, there, Matt, because as you say, he trained people who were on train people upon train people. And like I said, when you when you look at legends, you look at the likes of Ric Flair, Steamboat. But who who had a helping hand in making them? Vern Gagne, right? Exactly. He, he's a, he's a wrestling I mean, as much godfather. as it's like they mention it on the King of the Ring final, where King was just like, the Vern Gagne was the first person to go, yes, Jerry, you can be my heavyweight champion. Yeah, yeah. And it's sort of even then, so we wouldn't, would we have, would we have Jerry the King? Yeah, you, you had a very have Lawler at all. You had a very big. Yeah, you could even ask that question. You can. Would you? Would we have Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat? You can ask that question about all of them. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that I would say is that um, the great thing about Gagne is that yeah, he was a, he was a good wrestler. He he was a good promoter. Um, he you know tr- was obviously a very good trainer. He fit yeah. so many roles um, in the industry, and he knew how to do everything. Um, yeah, it's an incredible shame, but you know, one of the good things I think when I, I don't look at Vern Gagne and think, "Oh man, it's such a tragedy that he died." I think, "Wow, he lived a very full life and he did everything that he set out to accomplish." Um, yeah. To that, to me, is a fucking good life to live. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, and 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 you you talk to I a mean, lot of especially people, especially considering he like represented the U.S. in the Olympics as well. So it's not even like he's only ever been professional wrestling. He's been like amateur, like worldwide as well well back in his day obviously you had to be good amateur to be a good professional wrestler obviously things well, yeah. have changed change now you know as we know but um yeah man it's um like i said this is one of those unfortunate you know you know with with a wrestler passing away that it's not as unfortunate because he did he had a very full life and that's a great way to to live your life it's uh, and and I see a lot of people celebrating, you know, the career that he had, and that's a great thing to do. Um, honestly, I think anyone that doesn't know Vern Garnier's work, just go. Like I said, his resume speaks for itself. So you just look at you just look at that list of people he trained. That's more than enough for, for you to know just how good he was. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, they WWE um did a video of it. I heard apparently some fans were like, "Oh, well, he never wrestled for the WWE." Well, he was inducted into WWE's Hall of Fame. He, you know, WWE's Hall of Fame is, I know it's not like, a lot of people say, we made it a fact, oh, it's a joke, um, WWE, you know, the Hall of Fame itself. But he's still recognised by WWE, that's the important thing. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Would you rather them not recognise him, and then you'll moan, oh, they're not recognising because you never wrestled for them. It's like a double sword. You're not happy either way. I think it was fine. Yeah, that tribute that they paid to him. And, um... 
Well, it's like, oh, you never wrestled with WWE. Yeah, but WWE still own all the um, AWA footage. Hmm. Yeah. So, either way, I don't get what your problem is. Oh, they don't. He never wrestled. Yeah, and <laughs> let's face it, right? WWE doing a tribute to Van Gagne is the highest profile tribute that's going to happen because they are the biggest cat in town. Yeah. Um. So you know, getting his name out there, I thought, I thought it was fine. I honestly don't know why people would have such an issue with this. So. Um, that's that's our thoughts on that's it on that. But uh, yeah, that's like saying, oh, Stu Hart never wrestled for the WWE, but it's like, but WWE just going, well, we wouldn't have had Bret or Owen, so I guess Stu Hart's worth a mention. We wouldn't have a lot more people than just them as well, you know, from Stampede. Whenever well, I think, yeah. whenever I think of Godfather's wrestling, I think of you know Vince McMahon Senior, I think of Vern Gagne, I think of uh, Stu Hart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're, they're the main people that I think in terms of obviously American wrestling. You know, there's some big names in, in British wrestling, obviously. But those are the three names that if you are going to do like, um, you know, three people that lived their life and pioneered it into, the, into a new generation, those three people are pretty good choices to have. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of, 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 of um, Stu and, and Vern, their training methods obviously speak for themselves. Yeah. The amount, you look at the training regime between those two people. Fuck me, let, no one is as impressive as that. So, yeah, very interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, a great a great career for the guy. He lived a very long life, and um, you know, he's he's a. I like to call him a wrestling legend juggernaut. There's something for you there, a wrestling legend juggernaut. Fan feedback, Matt. Here we go. We begin the fan feedback. Brace yourself, it's about to get long. <laughs> yeah, this, this could be an hour long by itself. Jeez. <laughs> Um, Jonathan Ramos, who uh, apparently is a long-time listener uh, of the show, and uh, he's a subscriber to 70, so you obviously, obviously listening didn't subscribe. But he's a um, first-time commenter, and he's left a doozy of a comment. This is an awesome question he asked here. Very, very um, detailed. Uh, so much so that I had to go back and even do a little bit of research, kind of get my own thoughts and get myself back into the time that he was talking about, which I have done. So, his question is how would WWE, in WWE in 2001, when Triple H had his quad tear, how would that year would have looked after, you know, he had it torn in May? How would it have looked for, um, with Triple H involved if he hadn't torn his quad? And you remember, this is the year of the invasion, you know, the Alliance, ECW, WCW. Yeah. Um, and at the time, obviously, he was part of the, the two-man power trip, if you remember. He was uh, tag-teamed with Austin. And they were going along those lines. Um, so how would it have been if Triple H hadn't torn his torn his quad? So let's do a bit of a background. Let's take everyone to, um, to that that point in time. If you remember, Triple H was part of the two man power trip. He tore his quad, and then you had the entire invasion storyline, which he missed all of that, all of it. He missed yeah. the entire thing. And then, uh, if you remember, Chris Jericho won the Undisputed Championship. This is after all that finished. And they moulded the two belts together. And then Triple H came back much earlier than expected. He came back, won the Royal Rumble, and then he won the title at WrestleMania 18. So that's the that's the year, pretty much, in, in retrospect of what happened there. Um, but how would it have been if Triple H hadn't got injured? Now, part of me doesn't like answering questions with, like, what-ifs, because... You know, who knows really what WWE would have done um, at that time, especially as Triple H was a big star at that time and doing some of his best work, arguably, in the the couple of years prior to that, you know. Um, However, there's a few things here you wanted to put put down, a few things, what you think they would have changed. First of which is how do you think the power trip would have gone? I always thought that, Austin, I think everyone everyone can agree with this. Austin going heel was a fucking stupid idea. Yeah. Um, and I think WWE would have realised that eventually, and they would have broken up the guys, and they probably would have had a feud against each other. I don't think it would have lasted that much longer. Um, because, to be honest, it was a stupid move, making Austin heel. It didn't really make that much sense. Um, but they did, and I think that sh- surely they would have realised throughout the line... And, you know, just break them up. But I'm pretty sure that even if uh, they hadn't done that, I think by the time the Alliance storyline came around, I think the power trip would have would have finished at that point. That's just my opinion. Um, what in terms of what Alliance team would he have been on? Would he have been on the WWE side or the Alliance side? That is an interesting question because obviously Stephanie McMahon being 
the wife. The wife makes yeah. things interesting. Yeah, would he have joined his wife, or would he join the company that he, you know, helped win the the Monday Night Wars? Uh, this is all what ifs. No one really knows, obviously, and obviously that's the the point of the question. But my belief is that he probably would have stayed WWE. And uh, the WWE weren't afraid at that time to play the card of where well, we're married, but we're not on the same team, sort of thing. I know in the majority they were, but you look at some of the the, the you know the the them renewing their vow, sort of thing, and Triple H saying you're a skanky bitch or lying bitch for telling me that you were pregnant when you're not in school yeah this. so you could have had stuff like that i'm pretty much sure the drama would happen or, or maybe vince would have planted something i don't know they were going crazy with all that family drama stuff so i still think he would have wrestled in on wwe side i just and the very idea now of triple h wrestling on the wcw side just seems just crazy to me now it seems well, alien doesn't it it does yeah yeah exactly so um and the the last the, the last of the of the kind of things here that that possibly would have changed is would he would he, would he have been involved in the in the unification of the belts making the undisputed championship and I I would say uh, most likely yeah um, I'm pretty sure that he would have been um, but it all depends obviously on the plans at the time maybe him being there gets someone else injured I'm pretty sure he would I I don't think he we would have won it but he would have been involved in that, in those matches regardless. And if he hadn't got injured, who knows what kind of rivalry would have been on going into WrestleMania 18. He probably would have fought the NWI or something like that. Maybe something along those lines. But yeah, I do see him being involved in the title picture at that time. But yeah, that's it. That's the point of it there. I do think his injury helped him, arguably. You were this in is, my this camp is, for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is what you said, talking about this earlier on. Um, he had been wrestling for a long time, having that injury and making the fans... Um, dying to get him back and give him give him that moment. Yeah, I did think that helped him. And a lot of people disagree with that. A lot of people think, oh, he should have kept going. No, I think actually it helped him that he wasn't part of that. I mean, let's face it, the invasion storyline wasn't exactly great, was it? Really, it was kind of crap. But you know, he skipped all that. He didn't. He wasn't part of all that, and he came in fresh. And every wrestler needs that every now and then. I mean, he had been wrestling a lot, you know, without a break at before that point. So. Um, but now that you said NWR, I've got the music stuck in my head. Doom, doom, Um, but yeah, do, 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 are you on the same sort of thought as myself or along those lines? I don't think much, much would have changed with him being there, but yeah, he would have been a player, you know, around those times. But yeah, know. I just. I kind of been like, like I said, you sort of agree. You agree with me on the fact that sort. Of, I oh, probably no, the thing is nobody really knows. I reckon, yeah, he probably would have gone on to be. I don't know. He could have even gone as far as to become undisputed champion, but um, I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not a what if fan either. I mean, if yeah, I mean as as you said, it's like I I'm under the impression that his injury was actually beneficial yeah whether it like took time off of his career or anything like that i think the hype that led to him coming back um sort of cemented him as people genuinely rather than like oh yeah we like him but now it's like we fucking like he is triple fucking h yeah I, I, I tell you what, one question I might get asked on this is, do you think Triple H being involved in the Invasion store now would have made it better? And categorically, I can say this without any sort of um, hesitation, no. Absolutely not. It would have made it worse. And the reason being is because the scales were so tipped in WWE's favour in that entire, entire storyline that having Triple H on there, you know, a big player on that list as well, man, tch. Squander. So, suddenly you've got The Rock, Austin, uh, The Undertaker... And um, and Triple H, and you've got the likes of Buff Bagwell challenging them for the right to own the show. <laughs> yeah. You get what I'm saying here? Like, it doesn't help the situation. It'd just be further. another, like, if the scales aren't already, like, about to break, just Triple H just be like, tink, yeah. and that's it. Exactly, yeah. And let's face it, one of the big issues with that All Invasion storyline was the fact that they didn't sign UCW, um, I'm sorry, WCW's big players. Um, they didn't sign Sting which yep. they obviously did 14 years later. They didn't sign Goldberg. They didn't sign Ric Flair. They didn't get Hogan, Nash, Hall, all those guys, which were the centerpieces of WCW's popularity. 
and none of them were there for like, the invasion. So. It was, yeah, it was essentially of like, oh, it's the the prime of WWE versus the job squad of WCW. <laughs> yeah, that's essentially it. And Triple H wouldn't have helped it. He would he would have made it worse. Uh, especially the way Triple H obviously talks about it now. He was very sort of, it's us against them, and they're now coming to us, taking all of our jobs. He would have done his best to try and bury the shit out of all those guys. You guarantee it that, that was you know because he was trying to cement his spot as number one he's yeah. going to take out any this huge, like, huge i'm trying to cement talent. my place as number one and now there's 15 other people trying to cut turn up out of nowhere it's like uh no <laughs> yeah yeah i mean let's face it you know you look at that storyline that you had with booker t leading into wrestlemania 19 and booker t was being built up as this homeland retribute you know retribution hero who had conquered you know his 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 bad past and his gangland style and you know it's coming good and then he still beat him triple h just beat him at wrestlemania for no just fucking reason right. just yeah dead. so yeah still so i hope that's the answers that you're looking there um looking for there and i know that obviously that you i, I looked up on your twitter do your twitter page itself i know you do your own show Good luck. I hope you get as much success as as you want from that. Uh, so, Daniel Massey asks, who will be the one to defeat John Cena for the United States Championship? He believes that Roman Reigns is the top pick, not as sort of passing the torch, but more of a notch on Reigns' belt. Like, you know, I'm kicking this guy's ass and taking his belt, and the fans would kind of be on his side for the victory. Yeah. Um, now, uh, in terms of Roman Reigns beating Cena for the US title... I don't think it's Roman Reigns. Um, no. He is going to be in the world title picture, and I guarantee you, Roman Reigns is winning the world championship this year. Yeah, guarantee. Oh, we, we've said this already. Yeah, exactly. So he, if he's in that in that plans, then he's not going down to the US. And going down to the US for Roman will seem like a demote, like you know, being demoted, right? And it kind of is, but you know what I mean. In the eyes of the fans, oh, we couldn't win the world title, so now he's going to the US title. You know what I mean? Um, personally, I think that the, the the person to beat Cena should be someone, uh, a rising star or someone who desperately needs that a little bit something else too. That little oomph. Yeah. Now, the one person I can think of along those lines, and while I don't want him anywhere close to John Cena, except if he's winning the belt, is Bray Wyatt. I think having Bray Wyatt with some gold around him would legitimize at least his win-loss record, which is fucking atrocious. Um, True. but he can do some really cool storylines with that and, um, you know, very cool, um, uh, promos and rivalries that you can go off that and have some great matches. However, here's, here's the one thing. Anyone who beats Cena for the belt needs to be treated like Cena is being treated now as champion. He needs yeah. to be beating people. I each, agree with that. Yeah. He needs to be people beating people each week. And he doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to do the open challenge, but he has to be beating people each week, and he doesn't have to be what I like to call the Barrett champion, as in you lose every televised match. Yeah, because that. So as a result, you then go strong. Yeah, part of the reason why the US title is looking far better now as it has done in the in the best part of five years is because Cena's beating people night in night out in very good matches for it. So yeah. And it's Cena, of course, and he gets treated very well, as favorably. But like a god. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Yeah, I would like to see someone like Bray Wyatt or someone along those lines get the victory over Cena, and it'd be, it'd be a big deal. But to be honest, anyone that beats Cena has to be... It doesn't matter. If if someone beats Cena, or maybe they cheat to beat Cena, but they get the belt in some fashion, they need to be treated the same way Cena has. Because otherwise, all that great work that Cena's done for that belt is undone instantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah? So, but mm, this is WWE. I hope that they get the... The, the lesson with it but we'll, we'll soon see how, how that goes yeah that's it. What's, what's your thoughts who should beat cena for the title um down the line i don't know i don't i can understand your wire argument mm. but i think it's flashbacks of last year coming to you and you don't want white anywhere close to him again do you yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. um like ambrose maybe Possibly, it's got to be. I don't know. I kind, I, I kind of don't want Cena to lose the belt anytime soon. Yeah, no, I, I'm actually on the same board with you because he's doing a lot of good work with it. He's, I mean, I'll say that Rusev legitimised the US belt. I think he did an amazing job as United States champion. Mm. 
But I think Cena's Cena's allowing that opportunity where it's like it's Cena, so don't creative aren't going to go chuck him a five minute match. Let's give him ten minutes. Yeah, and have a good match. To have a good match mm. and have it with people who need to prove that they're capable of having good matches. Yeah. And so I it's, I kind of don't want to see Cena lose that belt for a while. No. If anything, I'll, I'll, I'll reserve judgment and just say, I'd leave it till SummerSlam. That's actually answering a question we have later on. Someone asked how long will do you think Cena have the belt? We wanted to have it for a while, and I do think he'll have it in, at very least until SummerSlam, but that's just yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Um, However, um, that that being said, uh, someone will actually have to eventually beat him for it. I would just like it for a guy that that could do with it, and I think someone who could do great work for it is White. I think White could do great work for it. And man, wouldn't it be great if he actually calls Cena out as a target and legitimately beats the guy? That would be huge. Uh, no, right. and beats really? him clean. Yeah, no. and, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, you know how it's not going to be. Cena's going to get screwed out for that belt, but we'll we'll see how down that line. Marish Moore asks our thoughts on J&J security and whether Austin Aries could end up in WWE. Now, I'll answer the last question first. Aries. No, I don't see him coming to WWE. Um, he's quite an outspoken guy. He's said a lot of things in the past. And his age um, kind of works against him in the sense that WWE won't be able to spend the time in him with NXT, uh, you know, moulding him. And I think it's just more along the lines of his outspoken nature. Yeah, I think that they won't they won't take many TNA grown guys and you know I do that with quotations because you know Aries did a lot of work in ROH but um, they won't take many TNA guys and I think that it, the, the news is they're going to be taking Samoa Joe and if that is I definitely think that closes the door on a lot of uh, potential of other TNA guys coming in. I think the only reason Samoa Joe comes in is because Triple H likes him. Now, whether or not Triple H likes a lot of other people in TNA, I heavily doubt that. So, I think a lot of TNA guys coming to WWE is probably not going to happen. Like, I, I'm, If Joe does come, then I'm all for it. Mm. But... It's sort of like, oh, but just the TNA guys, why? Why would you bring, why would they even consider the TNA guys when, if they were to just go, oh, look, they need to, they need somewhere to go, let's chuck them straight into the main roster. Yeah. And it's like, oh, all that work that we're doing for NXT, ruined. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, that, and let's face it, if they were to take Ares now and take it, he would do his rounds in NXT. And I'm just thinking that he, someone like him wouldn't really like that, you know? Um, and the fact is that you can't promote him straight up because, as you said there, Matt, people get pissed, and rightly so. So um, I do think that um, if, if Joe does come in and it does look like he will do, he will be on NXT, at very least at the beginning. Um, you know, it's just the way they do things. Hell, think, even at NXT, there'll probably be more people to be watching him than at TNA. Can you, can you imagine some of the matches you can have with people on, on, on NXT? That that I'm interested in, right? I mean, we praised the, um, the Rhino... Um, Zane match enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact is, and listen, I don't want this to sound bad, but I, I, I highly value Joe much higher than the likes of Rhino. I think that Joe has got much more likeness of getting a five star match out of a majority of those guys. Yeah. So even if he does get brought in, and obviously he's not going to be brought in to become world class talent, you know, let's just get over ourselves. But if he does get brought in, then um, he could be really, he could be really good talent to help some of these other guys. You know, I'm not saying enhancement talent. But I'm saying he's going to be really helpful to a lot of people. There. Yeah, he's very, he's got a lot of skills that just not inside, not just inside the ring that is useful to the guys in the NXT. He's got a lot to give, though. I think, if anything, is it? I mean, even if it's not, even if he doesn't turn up to become champion, I think he has a lot to give. <sighs> I'd quite like Joe on the main roster, but I think he'd provide, he'd be able to give so much more. To the WWE if he was in NXT. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? If he does get brought up, then he can be someone's bodyguard, someone's muscle. And I don't mean that as in the Jews. Just, oh, my God, you're just going to shoot him. No, I mean, literally, li- legitimately, a badass guy who wrestles. Uh, but, you know, he's uh, you now under someone else's employ. I don't know. But, anyway, let's go back to the question. Aries, no. Don't see it happening at all. Yeah. Um, and it's... 
for a few reasons anyway. Uh, the last question is, what do we think of JJ security? My thoughts on them is that they're great for the role that they're in, but don't go thinking they should be anything else but that. So I'm not saying that put these guys up and, um, you know... To make them a tag team! You know, push them towards a tag team title run. No, I do not want to see that. Um, they're good in the role that they're in, which is essentially the, you know, the Patterson and Briscoe of the new age. Just let yep. them keep doing that, and they can bump well. They can take moves from time to time. They're exactly, great. and we are, we, you know, we're talking about two former champions here. Yeah, but don't like as you said. Some people may get excited and go, like, "Oh, they're doing really well week in week out," and they obviously can still do stuff in the ring. Why don't they do? No, no, no. Keep them what they are now, because they're doing that well. All right. Yeah. They don't need to do anything else but, but that. So. I mean, especially considering, like. Since they've returned as J and J Security, I've suddenly realised how short they are. <laughs> Tiny, aren't they? Even compared to Rollins, especially Noble. I mean, Rollins is actually a lot taller than you think. Yeah, but it's just like you've got. But they're now below average for a WWE superstar's height. Yeah, I don't think that. Obviously, that does matter. Yeah, as you say. But, but so it, they look. Like, they look perfect for that situation where it's just like, oh, look at them. They're trying to be tough. They're trying to help. But I can look right over their heads. Yeah, that's it. They're, they're often used for comic relief and they're used um, to basically take moves at time to time. That's exactly what they're good for. And like I said, you, you put them any further than that and then suddenly you're putting these guys into a much more active role. I don't think Noble and Mercury want that. I think they're really happy with what they're doing now. So... Yeah, well, like, especially considering you're talking to a guy who are booking agents. Yeah, I mean their their role isn't uh, reduced to what's on the screen. They will help book stuff and go from there. So even though apparently Noble was um was the person that booked that horrible Raw Rumble shit that kind of fucked up Roman Reigns, but we won't go there. Was that Noble? Apparently, as far as I heard. So yeah. oh, as we know, Vince always has the final but, say. But, so you know, so, I mean, we're talking we're talking about Mercury who brought us the Shield. So oh, there you go, there you go. Well, didn't bring us to show, but he definitely honed them. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, nothing more than what they are, and they're doing great in the role that they're doing. Um, moving forward, Alex from Wrestling Boom asks us what feud we'd like to, we'd most like to see take place this year. And one of the almost awkward things about looking at this question is that, unfortunately, there wasn't anything that jumped out of me, and that's a little bit scary. Um there wasn't anything that kind of popped out to me, and I was like, "Oh wow, you know, there was some." There's no such sort of moment of "Oh my god, I'd love to see." Yeah, which I think is a little bit yeah. of a shame. Um, I did instantly go when I thought this. The first thing that did pop into mind when I thought about it, it was um, something that we said ages ago, and I'll do credit you with this, Matt, because you got it in my head, and you made me think it was a, it would be a really cool rivalry down the line. I don't know if it happened this year, but down the line, of Balor debuting and feuding with Wyatt. So. That would be fun. Um, I, w- I would imagine that would be really, really cool. <laughs> it feels good knowing that I can get in your head. Like yes, okay. Yeah. Do you, are you pleased with that answer? It pleases me. <laughs> pleases you. One of the other ones as well, um, if I look at um, Lesnar coming back, um, despite the, the, the sort of fragile nature of a certain Daniel Bryan, I would like to see Bryan and Lesnar, the David versus Goliath match. And it's not so much for like the, the perfect David versus Goliath, wouldn't it? Yeah, and the way I because I rec- I reckon that it's not so much the story that they're going to tell before the match, even though Paul Heyman will do that excellently. It's the match that they will attend in the ring of Brian using his speed, slowly chipping down at the beast, and yeah. you know maybe trying to weather the storm. Picking away, going. yeah. It's a it would be a really cool clash of styles, and I do think that's a match. That I'd be interested in seeing, but I don't think WWE has that in their mind. They're thinking, "Shit, we can't put Daniel Bryan in there with Lesnar. Let's not fucking." We can't murder. put Daniel Bryan in anything. Yeah, but also that kind of puts it into the whole storyline. If Bryan's up for it and he thinks he can take the the uh, the damage or the you know the abuse to his body in that match, then they could tell a phenomenal in ring physical story. Yeah, and that's what I love about wrestling. You know, in ring stories. So. Yeah, that's the one. I will put one more before I finish, and you can, you know, anything that you that you'd like to hear. In NXT, talking of Samoa Joe, I would love to see Samoa Joe versus Kevin Owens. <laughs> just that's two a feud. big guys just proper going at it. Yeah, I want to see that feud in NXT. So if that if you get signed, do that straight away because that's the kind of stuff I want to see. I don't even care if it's for the title. I just want both these guys because you know what. 
Ke- Owens is great on the mic. Samoa Joe is pretty good on the mic. You know, you can bust out a good ass promo when he wants to. Yep. You, the, they could build up this match to be feel like it's fucking World War Three. Like two mega powers are just gonna fucking collide. So yeah, that's what I'd like to see. Is there any any feuds that jump out at you? Anything that you're that you would want to see? Uh, oh. No, because I don't think we'll see anything. See, like what I'm thinking. I just want to see. Um, like Zayn and Neville on like the grand stage. Oh yeah, you you want to see the NXT talent t- do their shit at WrestleMania in a big match, don't you? Yeah. Okay. But uh, I can't I can't think of any current feuds. I think like as a result of um of what's going on now with regards to like King of the Ring and all that lot. Mm. Uh, I'm quite liking the fact that we're going to get a Barrett Neville feud. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, we, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a Barrett Neville. Feud. They've been wrestling each other a lot. That's for damn sure. So, um, yeah, I it's it did worry me that when this question came up, and I thought, oh wow, this is a good question. What feud do I'd like to see? And suddenly, I'm drawing a blank, and I'm like, but yeah. this guy, oh, he's gone from the company. Oh, but this guy, oh, he's in NXT. He's not debuting yet. And I'm like, oh. Mm. Okay, so it was a little bit worrying that I came from from that, but yeah, they're the ones I picked out there for you. Um, like I said, I, I guess the the most likely out of those to happen would be Brian and Lesnar, and that is a match I'm excited to see because I just I think these two could tell a really good story, and I just hope that they get a chance to at least do that, or Brian's body can at least take you know 16 German suplexes and. We'll and see. about three F5s. And... Yeah, and all the other shit that he gets, you know, thrown around that ring for. Uh, Cameron James asks, when do we think Kevin Owens will debut on Raw and how long will Cena be champion? And we obviously talked about <sighs> Cena earlier on. So well, yeah, that's, we've done one. Um... So when do you think Kevin Owens will debut on Raw? <sighs> yeah, that's a good answer. I like that one. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I don't think he's going to debut until after next year's WrestleMania. So you can got a very least. You reckon we got another year to wait? Another year. I okay. I think that Sami Zayn will be brought up this year. Um, I think Owens then will almost look at the NXT brand as kind of something that he should push forward. And it's not so much his choice. I think Triple H will see it that way as well. And, you know, he hasn't been there for... Some people don't... It's hard to think that he hasn't been there that long now. You know, he's been there less than six months. So, um, you you look at it from that perspective. Um, yeah, I, I think that he won't debut at least for another year. I think he'll, he'll be in NXT and he'll be having great matches and building up his rapport. And I'm pretty sure that um, Sami Zayn will move up. So, yeah. I just years. can't think of why, what he how he'd come up that's my thing i would love for him to be a a, a be brought up um the, the night after mania and actually like i would love this is a perfect world i would love for if lesnar's gonna go away for a long while have it be kevin owens the one to be put him out for a while now i know this is like really like whoa nxt guy comes up beats the shit out of lesnar to the point that lesnar can't fucking come back until SummerSlam. that's his right off right but Kevin Owens is one of those guys, one of the only guys that if he were to beat up Lesnar, part of me would think, okay, I, I buy would this. buy into it. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe along those lines. And what a better way to come up and debut than kicking the shit out of Lesnar. I mean, you know, it's the way it would be. And then you've got a Lesnar-Owens feud. You can have literally six months of Owens plowing through guys. And then you've got SummerSlam, Lesnar, Owens. That is literally Owens. Then is made for the first year of his career. <laughs> yeah, done. Of, of, of in, in on the main roster, but yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. And at, at very least, he could even be another six months above that. I don't think it'd be anything more than eighteen months, but he could be another six months after that. So. Yeah. Um, man, Ricky Tobacco one has been chilling out, listening to our podcast, and playing some GTA. I, that sounds like a Sunday night to me. I do exactly the same thing. So, yeah. there we are. Uh, he asks if we have any favourite pay-per-view music themes. Uh, I have one that stuck with me for a while. Um, more, more recently. It was um, SummerSlam 2008. So, about seven years ago now. Um, and it's a song called Ready to Roll by Jet Black Stare. It's not very well known, obviously. 
Um, but I saw that, and one of the things that reminds me of that song is that this is back when the WWE.com was in its early stage. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. as, it wasn't you know as 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 advanced and well done as it is now. But what they did is they had this sort of interactive web page for SummerSlam, and it would play the track, and then you'd have these guys kind of turning around, have the tail of the tape, and it would kind of get you set up for the matches and stuff like that, what, what was going to happen, everything like that. And I thought the the song was really good, at really getting me pumped up for that show. And I've listened to that song for years after that because it was a really good rock track. Is there any pay per view themes that stick out to you? Um, no, well, there was one, but I'm really struggling to think about it now. Do you know what show? It was? I had it on my phone, but now I don't have it anymore, and it's really annoying. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna kill you later. You're gonna figure that out, like you know, one o'clock in the morning, and it's just gonna kill you. Yeah. And one of the other ones I like, I mean, because I'm <laughs> burn me if you want to. I like Skillet, and I like their song. Um, uh, I think it was Hero that they did for the Royal Rumble a couple of years ago. I think 2011, maybe. I might be wrong with that, but I thought that was a cool thing. I just like that song as well. Um, However, in terms of, I know, go on. I know they used Fuzzy. Yeah, that's quite good. But then I think that might just be because I'm a fan of Fuzzy rather than it stuck with me. Yeah, that you know. So yeah, I get, I get what you mean. Yeah. Um. Apart from that, no, uh, I know that. Uh, um, you know, Mangra Key Tobacco One left like fucking tons of like of, of themes. So I'm gonna so I did search a few of them up, and I didn't have time before we started recording. So I'm gonna search a few of them up uh, in regards to that. But it's unfortunate that nowadays, especially over the last like two or three years, WWE have gone w- way more into the mainstream music market, whereas before it used to be like. I was just thinking like when you had um, Papa Roach, "Wanna Be Loved." one pay-per-view wasn't it yeah we had like evanescence for like one of them as well um back in the early days of evanescence um they had the you know they they had the auto bridge as some of the you know the the themes for their song i like having rock music as uh as it but they've turned away from that because then they want to be like a you know global sports and you know and all this lot so they've gone to make more mainstream so now we're seeing more p diddy even though i do like the i'm coming home song um but they've done like you know wiz khalifa and just loads of us. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm old and I'm out of the music scene nowadays. But that sort of stuff just doesn't appeal to me. That's exactly it for me. Yeah, I, I'm just like I. <laughs> it's I don't like, it. oh, we're doing it because like more people listen to it. It's like, well, you know what? More people listen to bad music. Mm. That's just my own opinion. It's just like I don't like this. Yeah. I don't I know how people can like this. Especially considering at Mania, it's like Travis Barker, how you have fallen. <laughs> you just took the fucking words out of my mouth. I thought WrestleMania 31's theme was fucking shit. You can take away. Yeah, yeah. Well, Every, and it would come on all the like time. It was the drum for Blink 182. <laughs> Are you proud of yourself? What you yeah. yeah, I thought that fucking. So, and you know what? I even like Skylar, Skylar Grey. I thought I like her voice. But I tell you what, that, fuck, that song fucking sucks, especially for that man. And I and literally, um, especially like leading up to WrestleMania, literally every five minutes you'd hear that tune, and I would be like, mm. yeah, "I'm not looking for like, it's that sort of like, I'm about as excited for this event as I am for the music." Yeah, yeah. Which unfortunately, like, mm. it's kind of true. It's like WrestleMania, but the card's not looking that great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just think that uh, that 2008 SummerSlam song, I just like it. I just stuck with me for a while. In terms of like uh, how shows, I fucking love the original Raw theme. You know that one. You know with the um, the sirens and all that shit. I just love. Yeah. It. I just love that one. So. Kane Saint Dennis doesn't want to bring this up, but he did, and he says that. He believes that Bray Wyatt has only lost two of his feuds, Cena and Undertaker, and he's won every other one. Now, um, I'm going to talk about this. You are right in looking at it in that way, right? However, perspective, as I said back a couple of episodes, it is an extremely powerful thing. Let's look back at what Bray Wyatt has done. Look at his track record over the last couple of years. He feuded with Daniel Bryan and won that rivalry. Fair play. Can't say anything against that, right? Uh, he won in a very good match against Daniel Bryan at Royal Rumble. And Daniel Bryan didn't get his comeuppance against the guy. He just won. So, yep. Okay. Um, then you look then. Then he goes into his rivalry with Cena. And he spent the better part of four four months losing to Cena. Um, then he had that long period where he was in that, you know, he was in the, the ladder match for the, you know, the, the, the title. And 
lost lost that didn't win the bell but a lot of people other people didn't win it so i'm not going to blame him for that but then he got like you know he was just kind of going nowhere so then he kind of you know remember that's the time where he disappeared had his reboot yeah and set harper and rowan free which um is a shame because i think why having those two guys around definitely was helping but um then he and i put in heavy quotations since his reboot he beat Dean Ambrose. And the reason why I say that in huge quotations is because it didn't feel to me as if he beat anyone. It felt to me as Ambrose beat himself in the majority of that stuff. The exploding yeah. TV, just Ambrose being an idiot in general, you know, in regards to that. Yeah, I mean, I was just like, especially considering that that feud didn't... It started off with, with quite a bit of promise, and I quite liked it, even though it did piss on the fire of... Um, of Ambrose Rollins. Yeah. Um, but, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. We need a match. Uh, why Ambrose? Yeah. And you know what? I, we can make a stipulation. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. I mean, no one's going to remember the rivalry they had because it meant nothing. And that, that is important. Yeah. Um, and then obviously he had his rivalry to the Undertaker. The, the most important thing, and this isn't really down to wins and losses. Wyatt now has a reputation of saying he's going to do something and then not doing it. For a or talker, he's just going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, or for a talker... I'll give you the face of fear, but you lost. Yeah. But I'm now the face of fear. So it means but, like another of his matches make any sense. You know, they, 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 or at least are inconsequential is, a, is, is probably the best word for it, you know? Doesn't matter if he wins or losses, he's just going to keep saying what the fuck he wants to anyway. And... Now the perception is, now, you look at the rivalries, he's won, okay? So he beat Brian and he beat Ambrose. The two people he lost against are Cena and Undertaker. Cena and Undertaker are big fucking players. Now, I know I know, Brian is a champion, everyone loves Brian, and he is a star in his own right. But you look at the world championships between Brian and Ambrose, you have won. Or, if you count the world championships Brian's had, then you can add a couple more to that. You have the world championships that Cena and Undertaker have together. Yeah. You, you kind of get what I'm getting at here. He's now looks like he now has the the sort of perception, Bray Wyatt, of being a guy who can't beat the top guys. And you know what that's called? Mid card. Cool. That sounds a little bit. What's that? What's that tapping? It's like is that you tapping against the glass ceiling? Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's the issue with, with Bray Wyatt. I know you had your thought, and you technically you are correct. It's just all about perception, and that's that's. What I wanted to explain the reason why we said what we said. Uh, you did leave another question as well um, about the best and worst logos in WWE history. Um, I picked the SummerSlam logo as being one of the ones I hated because they stick with it for about three or four years. I thought that was quite lazy, um, personally. And they that was the time where they literally had like consecutive shows at the Staples Center, which I don't agree with, but um, still. Oh, yeah, 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 where it was, like, exclusive to the Staples Center. It's like, yeah. what? They had, like, four consecutive years of being at the Staples Center. I think for your second biggest show of the year, you should really move that shit around. Can you imagine WrestleMania being in the same place two years in a row? It's almost unthinkable. No. And I know SummerSlam isn't the same, but maybe it should be thought of that way, but still. SummerSlam in England... Yeah, yeah. Throw back to the uh, to that Why Wembley not? show. Why not? Have tell you, I've have Bret Hart fucking host it. People will love it. Yeah. So there we are. Uh, yeah. In terms of uh, Mania logos, I thought that. Uh, so, sorry. In terms of logos, I liked Mania logos are normally pretty good. Wasn't keen on the WrestleMania 31, but I thought the WrestleMania 30 was great. Um, some most. Of it looked pretty good. Most. Of them. Uh, that's just. <sighs> I'm in total agreement with it here with him though because he says he doesn't like the he doesn't like the extreme rules. Yeah, it's like I am in total agreement. Mm. I don't think it's as bad, but I could definitely. I'm see. just. Oh, I think it's ugly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just not a fan of it at all, no. especially because like it's a cross. Well, I kind of get that. It's not even a cross now. It just looks like a line with a leg. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It looks like a demented H. Sort of thing. Maybe. I don't know. But maybe. Well, it is, it is a cross. It's just... <laughs> it's just... Well, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, that was all I would say. I think the WrestleMania 30 was... I think the reason why I think I picked WrestleMania 30 is because they fucking made the set out of that logo and the set looked amazing. So yeah. I think that maybe is making me a bit more biased towards it. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll go with that as, um, as my thought on that. So... Um, 
Yeah, is there, is there any other I think, designs or anything along those lines? Um, or anything? Is there any more that I could think of? I don't know. I was sort of like the worst for this because I was sort of like, oh, that looks really good. That's how was it? How, can you remember it? No. Mm. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Um, yeah, that's our thoughts on it there. Like I said, uh, that's just our... We just wanted to explain the reason why we said what we said about Bray Wyatt um, in, in regards to that. And, uh, you know, you could... Sometimes sort of people say this thing of wins and losses don't matter. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they, they don't. It's all about how WWE chooses to promote those wins and losses. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why um, Wyatt... You know, he's come. It comes across as a guy that you'd want to listen to everything that you wanted to say because you thought that he had some power behind him. Now, when I think of him, I'm just like, ugh, he's just talking again. It doesn't matter if he wins or loses. You just keep doing it. It's inconsequential and it's a bit frustrating. Yeah. But, yeah. NXT report card. Let's get into that. Brian, Jesus, we spent long doing that. Um, yeah. Feedback, Jesus. Um, NXT report card. If you're new to this segment, and I don't blame you, it's only the second week we're doing it. I'll explain it again. And uh, maybe I'll explain it again next week, and then we'll just continue as we're going on from here. Me and Matt will put our professor caps on, and we're going to rate about two or three different talents each week on how they're doing and give them a grade of A to F. Even though today we're doing five. No, we're doing four. Four? I'm pretty sure you mentioned... Uh... Wow. Wow, wow, this is meltdown of the podcast. What the fuck? Well, we'll see. Carry on, carry on, we'll and see. I will explain why I thought five. Yeah, yeah. You'll put you'll you'll put the odd person out that we haven't done this week and you'll and you'll tell me why. Yeah. So yeah, we're basically gonna give him a grade, myself and Matt. As we already realise, me and my myself and Matt um grade extremely differently and you know, that's fine. Uh however we're gonna be talking about a group of people that are involved in rivalries with one another. Yep. We're going to be talking about Colin Cassidy, Blake and Murphy, and Enzo Amore. And you may be thinking, that's four people. Uh, I would rate that as three, and I'll get into that in a minute. Okay. See, because you mentioned Carmella when we were talking about this, hence uh, why I thought five. No, we're not doing Carmella this week. We're not doing Carmella. Okay. Um, we'll talk about Carmella eventually, but we're not doing it. That's one for another day. That's one for another day. Let's talk about Colin Cassidy first. He's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. That's quite true. Can't teach being seven foot tall. Um, uh, in my opinion, I, I like Cass, and as soon as I saw him, um, very first of all, I thought, "Wow, he's he he stands out," you know. Of course, because of, because of he's seven foot tall. He's seven foot tall, and of course, you can't teach that. You can't teach that. Um, in the beginning, I thought that he he kind of lacked the verbal skills. He does at times look a little bit clumsy in his feet. This is when I first saw him. Um, you know to match the frame he has he's got a lot of potential there but um he did look at times that he you know he comes with that size you just didn't look as much on your feet as someone like andrew neville would when you got a lower center of gravity um yeah now he's obviously a lot better he's still got a way to go and he's got lots to improve on um both on mic and in the ring but he's a good well-rounded talent at the moment he can get stuff done in the ring he can talk a bit much better than some other people on the roster can. Um, and like I said, he's got that thing where he doesn't need to try to stand out. His size will do that for him. Um, yeah. yeah. And he's he's good in the role that he does. Um, what's your thoughts on Cass? Do you think, do you think he's doing good? I like Cass. Um, I like the tag team of them. Mm, um, group. I'm just a little bit more restrained towards like you say he's like he's he's solid i'll give him that mm. but he has you're seven foot tall right you're going to be doing a sidewalk slam you're going to be doing a big boot and that's about it why because you're seven foot tall you think that he, he has generic big man move set so you think that he's he's going to be found a little bit wanting ring wise yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay I've wrestled people, I've trained alongside people who do the exact same moveset. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, and you could argue that maybe Cassidy wouldn't be as good on the mic or wouldn't have this sort of deal and gimmick he's got now if it wasn't for his tag team partner, which we'll be talking about in a minute. So, yeah. Um, you could argue that. But still, we can only review on what we see. I think that in terms of a more 
well-rounded talent. I think he's more well-rounded than Enzo is, and I'll explain why. Yeah, definitely. Um, because Enzo's talents spike heavily in one way and are very low in the other but we'll see we'll talk about it in a minute but mm-hmm. what's your grade for Cass um, in regards to how he's doing at the moment oh, I'm going to sit him at a C a C okay uh, I'm putting Colin Castillo B minus okay um, the reason being is because um, I believe that he has improved um, there is still a lot of work to be done but obviously he showed that he can listen and he can improve Yep, and I do think that for a guy his size, sometimes as you say, that it's, it's some people are oh, it's generic. You can do the big man moves. I'll tell you, what, most big men don't know how to talk at all, and Cass does know how to talk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I was a little bit more, a um, um, little bit more generous towards the man, maybe along those lines. But uh, yeah, B minus for me, a C for you. Let's talk about his tag team partner then. The uh, the realist the guy. The stud. Yeah, that's it. Enzo Amore. Now, I think that he, in the group that we're talking about now, he's easily the worst in the ring. Yeah. Um, he has been found wanting a few times in matches in NXT with other development, developmental talents. So you can imagine that if he does get put up to the main roster, his ring, skin, ring skills are going to be put to the test a lot more. And if he's struggling at the moment, he will struggle there. What's funny about Enzo is that, despite that, he is, and I say this without any sort of hesitation... The most over person on the roster? He is one of the best talkers WWE has. Yeah. In their entire... I'm not just talking NXT. I mean, Raw, SmackDown. Everything. He's that good. And he's got charisma fucking... Coming out of the wazoo, seriously, like he could, he's got so much charisma. He's managed to give Colin Casti and Carmella some, yeah, with with, st- with some to spare. When it comes to charisma, this guy just doesn't have an issue. Some people go their entire careers trying to be more charismatic. Do you think Enzo Amore has any problems? I think being I think Enzo goes to bed at night wishing he was less charismatic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, if he could pour some of his uh, charisma into improving his ring work. He would be one of he'd be like one of the talents that I'd be saying this guy's got fucking money written all over him. He really does. Um, and it's it's funny because he if he can just become passable in the ring, his verbal skills will make a career for him. Yeah, absolutely, without question. If WWE let that happen, of course. Um, it's just down to whether or not. <sighs> He can go. It worries me that I think that there might be an issue when he gets to the main roster, if it stays the way it is now, that he might do the talk. When it comes to walking the walk, he might fuck up in the ring. And as soon as you do that, Vince is going to look at that and be like, hmm, maybe don't use you as much. Yeah. Or people don't want to work with you because you're making the the match look bad. And then we're going to have to rate it badly on this show as well, you know. So that's my worries about about Enzo. However, the, co- the the question I pose to you, Matt, is that even though he's a worse a worse in ring worker than Cass is, do uh-huh. you think overall, even with that, if you were to stack up everything, do you think overall would you pick him over Cass? Because it all goes down to the grade you're going to give him. Obviously, if he's higher than Cass, then... Yeah. Um, I think one without the other is flawed. Yeah. I think they're the perfect team in that sense, aren't they, really? Yeah. Um, Would you say that Cass needs Enzo as much as Enzo needs Cass? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. I think without... If Cass couldn't get over get himself over like if Enzo seems to sort of struggle in the ring which from time to time he does I mean I think it might also because ugh, I want to sound like an NXT commentator now Enzo looks like a rat <laughs> yeah that, that, that's 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 pretty yeah yeah okay just... um <laughs> and 
Like, whenever he's, he gets tagged in, it's sort of like, right, and Enzo's going to take a beating. Mm. And then he tags Cass for a hot tag, and then that's it. He tags himself back in, and he's the one that does the splash for the finish. Done! Yeah. yeah. And that is a Cass and Enzo match, like, from start to finish. Yeah, okay. And you think that in a lot of their matches, they've been found a little bit wanting. Yeah. Fair enough. However, though, what's your grade for Enzo Amore? You gave Cass a C... What's uh, Enzo Amore? Oh, the tension is palpable. I think I'm probably going to have to go with the C as well. You're going to C as well? So you think they're I, just even as each other? I think they're even because, like I said, it's one one needs the other. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I gave Colin Cassidy a B minus. I have also gone with Enzo Amore a B minus. Yeah. So I, you know, in terms of the same thing. And the reason I went for that is because uh, Enzo. Um, he's, if I were to pick you one, know of the what? Two... I'm going to give and I'm going to give him a B minus. I'm going to put him a bit more than a bit more than a Cass, just purely because he is just ridiculously over. Yeah, and he's just such a good. He's boy. he's willing. He's willing to look like an absolute tool. Yeah. As well. Yeah. No, no, listen. People may think that that's harsh, giving a B minus. It's just because that they still they're in developmental for a reason. I don't think currently they are ready to be brought up. So, um, but yeah. I will very much happily say to people that I will spell it out for them, and yeah. I'll spell it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's it's funny because we look at these guys, and I would definitely pick them over the next guys we're going to talk about. But as you say, oh, Bauer half loves Cass and en- Enzo and Cass. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? The general wrestling fan, yeah, is going to love these guys. They really will um, if they're used right properly. Of course. Yeah, like so. she's always, always. I get like, and you can't teach that. Just every now and then, just for like what? But the guys, are, uh. <laughs> Let's just hope WWE doesn't go, well, you're getting too overused and that stop using that catchphrase because, uh, you know, that that would be... That, you don't that's have a bad, killer, especially to end. You don't have bad news anymore, Barrett. Mm. Oh, oh. That's it. Uh, let's talk about Blake and Murphy. Um, <laughs> they are the other people we're talking about now. Um, technically, in terms of in-ring, they're good, but they have the personality Much of a wet plant. Yeah. I think that's a big issue is that unfortunately the reason why I'm reviewing them together is because they're not different enough to differentiate from one another so I do review them as a team the generic dubstep duo yeah we call them the dubstep guys um, and that's not great the thing is that they're a good tag team but they're a very forgettable tag team in and ring they're, they're better than oh Cass. they're better than Cassidy like, yeah like but, but who are you going to remember? Who are you going to remember? You're going to remember Colin, uh, Colin Cassidy and Enzo Amore. You're going to remember Blake and Murphy. Yeah, exactly. And that, and the fact is that when I ask that question, it's so easily Enzo and Cass. Yeah. That's a problem for Blake and Murphy. They are way too generic, and that's the issue with them. And they're going with a storyline that they're trying to woo Carmella, and they're trying to get her on their on their group. Fair enough, but it's just. I mean, they haven't been around as much as Enzo and Cass. I just don't think these guys have got the verbal skills at nowhere near as, as much as Enzo. And even Cass has. Yeah. yeah. So that's a big problem with them. I'm sure WWE will get a lot of use out of these guys as workers. Anything above that, I'm not so sure. They need to show me more for that. And for that, I give them a... Because I gave Cassidy and Enzo Amore a B-, minus. I give Blake and Murphy a C. I will give them a B minus. Okay, so you're going. Oh wow, you're rating them above Enzo. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm rating them above Cass. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Purely because they can at least put on a solid match. Okay, all right, fair enough. I, I'm not gonna not crack on, on like, your grading, not, of course. Not on the gimmicking or anything like that. Like, they're. I'm not a fan. Okay, but they're right, better talent. And the reason I vote the Messi is because you you could yeah they could do a great match but WWE can find anyone that can have a great match finding a great talker will be much harder for them to do so yeah, that's right. the reason I put them the way they are it's an hour and a half uh, of the podcast already done we haven't even started our raw review so we better get into our raw review hey it's like a record yeah uh, so our raw review uh, I say this 
every now and then. If you're new to the show, which we do get new people in, we review every segment of Raw, even the small ones. This show is coming off of Extreme Rules. We're now on the road to payback. And uh, WWE have already announced that we will have Rusev versus Cena for our thoughts on that a little bit later. And uh, they're not positive, by the way. Um, the last... Another stipulation match. Mm. The last few shows um, of WWE sort have been more like l- the majority of last year and less like the build-up to WrestleMania. Um, you know, the, the, the WrestleMania show and the Raw after WrestleMania was fantastic and it seemed like, oh, wow, this is what WWE can be like when it's firing off all cylinders and then it kind of went back to the way it is. Um, and it does feel as if, unfortunately, they kind of feel like, to me, they feel like they're filling in a void until SummerSlam, until their big attraction. Yeah. I mean, the worst part is, it's all with, we make it sound like we're shocked by this. No, we're not so really. like, oh, yeah, oh, what the, yeah, it's gone back again, hasn't it? Mania yeah. Hangover. It happens every year, just some years are worse. I think last year's Mania Hangover was far worse, but... Oh, yeah. But this, 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 this still isn't that great, if I'm honest with you, but... This show was from Green Bay, Wisconsin, so when, um... Um, Archie says Green Bay what's up he actually does have the right place this time so Seth Rollins kicks off the show obviously quite happy to have uh, walked out the champion at Extreme Rules Um, now do you remember that Orton picked the um, the the steel cage match you know for Extreme Rules and we talked about this a little bit more in the um, in the review of Extreme Rules which you can catch on the on the channel as well um it's like WWE aren't even kind of pretending now that the cage keeps people out, sort of thing. Yeah, it's like um, it's a cage. Yeah, we get that. Yeah, it's, people people can't get in it. There's a door. Really? Yeah, <laughs> there's a door stupid. for a start. And all it's held by is you don't even need a door master. You could take the fucking bar out yourself. It's just stupid. It really is. Um, Rollins blows his own horn for essentially the first five minutes of the promo. Um, essentially, it's the start of all Rollins promos nowadays, but he is a heel. Yeah, toot, so. toot, toot, toot. Um, so, what's funny here is that in the same sentence, he states that he beat Randy Orton all by himself. And then he goes on to thank all the people that helped him win the match. Yeah. Uh, it's was... like, I did it, but thank you, everyone. Yeah. It's like well, uh, either Rollins himself is brain dead or the writing is brain dead. I'll let people make up their own minds in sure. regards to which is brain dead. Kane, however, takes exception to Rollins playing down his his contribution to the to the title defense, and he calls him a spoiled brat, and he also calls him WWE's <laughs> Justin Bieber, <laughs> which sparked lots of chants throughout the night. But I mean, you could, to be fair, you did have Rollins sort of just like this, like. Oh, this guy from the 90s, and they're like, oh, oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, doing... He was, grow he was, up. Yeah. Um, the one thing, however, talking about Justin Bieber, and if Seth Rollins is truly WWE's Justin Bieber, then I would state that instead of having Rollins face Lesnar at SummerSlam, which seems to be the plan, let's have Justin Bieber face Lesnar at SummerSlam. Yes, a hundred times, yes. I, I would I would pay... Let's, let's let Bieber go to Suplex City. I would pay good cash money for that. Good cash money. Yeah. Lots of it. Lots of green. Green money. I would throw it out my TV screen to see Lesnar kill. Justin Bieber could be a fucking millionaire. All he has to do is announce, live on air, in the next WWE pay-per-view, Brock Lesnar will be facing me, and I don't know how to wrestle, and it's going to be legit rules. He's going to beat the shit out of me. Buy it. You know, that way you can get it. I guarantee you, if if he gets like even a cut of that of that pay per view revenue, he'll be set for life. Yeah, okay. so you just take That's one. Take, All of that money. Take one beating, and you, and then and then you can go off and ride into the sunset. You may not survive it, but that's the risk. You know, that's, that's what happens going against Lesnar. Obviously, it won't happen, but still, um, <laughs> that's a little bit of uh, of just almost perverse fantasy booking right there. So we'll we'll, we'll side step away from that. Um, so, <laughs> Orton comes out, says that, oh, there's grounds for a rematch that is because the stipulations are a bit shit at Extreme Rules. Shit. Yeah. No RKO. Oh, mm. but he was an SKO. Oh, fucking bollocks. <laughs> oh, get it? Oh. Yeah. Um, and then he proceeds to call Rollins Catwoman. And I'd argue, now, what the fuck is, is Rollins supposed to be? Is he Bieber 
Is he Catwoman? Is he Justin Bieber in a cat costume? I don't know. What WWE are trying to make yeah. him to be? I don't know. Yeah. Well, we all ponder this it's like, anyway. Oh, is it Catwoman? It's like wrong franchise is famous at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, it's Catwoman. Yeah, yeah. And, you yeah. mean Black Widow? Ah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe they, you know, like, uh, to be honest, it's just bullshit. I don't really care. Yeah. Um, Roman Reigns comes out anyway, reminds us that Big Show was beaten last night. No Big Show on this show, which was a good thing. Yeah. And so it's, yeah, yeah. He said that with almost a gasmic glee. It's like we could like, breathe because it's just like, oh, he's not here. Suddenly everything is right with the world. You know, yeah. Just skip out. But Roman says obviously now he should be in line for a title shot. And um, I'll tell you what I will say is that the response to Reigns from the crowds after Mania, and obviously the Raw after Mania in London, those aside, he has been getting good responses. So Oh, yeah. yeah. He even got a relatively good response in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, Chicago treated him very well, I would argue. So there we are. It was shocking. Mm. Kane sets up a tag team match with himself and Rollins against Reigns and Orton later on for the night. And then he says he will let the fans decide who faces Rollins at payback. And, um, you know, it's either um, it's either Orton, Reigns, or a triple threat match, which is essentially, yeah. you don't want this, you don't want this, vote for this. This is essentially, essentially what they want to say. Do you reckon it was one of those? Well, yeah, considering they kept saying triple, triple threat match throughout the night. Yes, that's exactly what. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah it's true. Yeah. I think it's just because like, there's been a lot of times it's like, do you want him to fight David Atunga or Heath Slater? Or do you want him to fight Randy Orton? It's yeah. just like... <laughs> Would you rather eat one pea, a bean, or a 20-ounce steak? That's it. You know? It's just the way it is. Yeah. So at least it wasn't like that Jericho one. What's that? <laughs> do you want a fool's count anyway? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had no holds barred, Matt. <laughs> That was hilarious, like, to be honest. That was great. Well, it wasn't great. It was fucking abysmal, but that was why it was funny. I always think that's... That, that is the poster child for WWE polls right there, isn't it? You know, it's like... Do we want do we want a regular match, a regular match, or a regular match? You pick. You decide. Yeah. Ooh. Um, this opening promo was about 15 minutes long. I've kind of grown somewhat submissive to these opening promos now. Good. It, Accept it. it. No, I'm not. You can change nothing. You sound like what, like a WWE minus robot. Like one of us, accept it. No, no I will not accept it. No. Well, I'm saying I have kind of because you have. Because you should. I at least what I'm trying to say is I've given up hope of a match starting raw. That's what I'm essentially saying. So good. Uh, <laughs> you are learning. <laughs> You're like a fucking Sith Lord now, aren't you? Like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. With a WWE like logo on, on on like your robe or something like that, you know. It's carved into my forehead. <laughs> well, it's a demented style of Harry Potter sort of thing, you know. Like, yeah. Okay, <laughs> moving on simply from that. Bad news: Barrett versus Dolph Ziggler. King of the Ring is back, and we've got the preliminary rounds, or well, the quarterfinals. Um, on, on this show before they air the live matches the night after which I have watched we'll talk about that a little bit at the end of the Raw review and guess what guys I fucking love the King of the Ring and you may be asking why it's kind of crap well it didn't used to be crap back in the days the King of the Ring was a pretty big deal yeah uh, and um, and then fact- Booker got it yeah well it was a little bit broken before then as well yeah the thing that um that I like about the, the, the King of the Ring, especially when you're using it in a thing like this, is that I dislike them breaking up into two nights because I liked it when it was like it was his own show and it would all be about one guy running the gauntlet, you know, trying yeah. to conserve his energy, you know, dealing with the injuries that he's having in each match along the way, uh, wrestling different styles to try and win, that sort of thing. Um, and I tell you what, I'm, I'm an advocate. If they want to do King of the Ring again next year, then why don't you make it a WWE exclusive, put it in a small arena, you know, NXT style, and have it as a very enclosed event, and have it all on the same night. You know, where, uh, and one of the things that has to be very important with the King of the Ring is that whoever wins it, obviously we know who wins it, but whoever wins it, it needs to be treated like an achievement and not a gimmick. That's yeah. extremely important. Back in the day, you didn't see the likes of Bret Hart, Austin after winning, or even fucking Brock Lesnar. King after Brett. 
Yeah. King Brett. You wouldn't have cut him coming out each week with a fucking robe. No. He was the king of the ring, and it wasn't so much like, I am a king, and I own this fucking... That is just fucking stupid. Yeah. It's... I'm not a king of, like, I don't own a thing. The only thing I'm king of is the ring, right? I am the best in that ring. That's what the king of the ring means. I'm not going to parade around in a fucking crown. I'm too good for that. I'm going to beat people in the ring each night. Yeah. That's what a king of the ring is, yeah? Um, except WWE seems to love, you know, oh, if I win the king of the ring, I will change this and this. No, it's not what it's about. You know, you're, you're king of the ring. You're not the king of the fucking WWE, like... Get what you mean, king of the spider people? Oh, oh wow! Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Oh, j- 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 well, that that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen, right? Anyway, let's talk about this match. Bad news, Barrett against Ziggler. It was okay. It was a good match. Ziggler shows up in the middle of it, showing footage of Ziggler kissing his ass the night before. Ziggler shows up halfway through this match. Do you say? Sheamus shows up. <laughs> and Ziggler turned up to interfere with a Ziggler match. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's it. That's it. Uh, well, it could be Ziggler showing up to interfere in a Ziggler match because we know a perfect Ziggler doppelganger. Of course, we have video of footage of the man now, so who knows? <laughs> um, this is obviously enough to distract Ziggler. Uh, he gets ball hammered, and Barrett wins the match. And I'll tell you what—you won't see many more occasions of an Irish man helping out an Englishman. That's true. Doesn't happen that often. Believe me, I live in Ireland, so yeah, that's the case. Um, doesn't doesn't sit very well, does it? Mm. I tell you what, I've seen as much footage of Seamus's ass to last me a lifetime. So, um, yeah, I don't really want to see it again. But there we are. Apparently, he wants everyone to kiss his ass. Maybe he's got a fetish. I don't know. So the fact that the worst part of that is like for King of the Ring, not for King of the Ring, for Extreme Rules. It was always like, oh, let's just get stereotypically racist, shall we? Because it says arse. Yeah. <laughs> Kiss me arse. arse. And apparently everyone now is saying arse. It's like, okay. Uh, but still, uh, it's obviously this the Ziggler, Seamus, right, for going to end. I'm okay with that. They could probably pull off another good match. So. Yeah. Big E versus Tyson Kidd. Uh, Xavier Woods takes the mic before the match. He thanks all the clappers who have clapped for the new day. And all I can imagine is just one lonesome guy, lonesome guy really happy because he's just been sitting there. <laughs> Yay! 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 And the rest of us are happy telling the world that the gimmick is fucking atrocious. So And racist, I that, might my, my, my add. So. That's it. JBL says he doesn't like the New Day's positivity about trying hard and overcoming negativity. He dislike he's never liked it as JBL. Even though when he talks about John Cena and the same things, he's like sucking his dick. So Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um So Tyson Kid, I one of the things I liked about this, I don't, and we noticed it at the um at the pay-per-view, Tyson Kidd, when he's now stomping members of the New Day, he will stomp in time of the New Day sucks chart. He'll go bang, bang, bang. I love it. I just yeah. love it. A little, little bit of a touch there. However, it doesn't last too much long. Kidd gets held down, his leg held down by um, outside interference. Big E scores the victory. By fucking Xavier Woods mm. again. Yeah, that's it. Um, I think Xavier Woods now holds a re- holds the like a record for winning two different tag team championships without actually winning a match. Yeah. He's done it in TNA. I was really quite odd. I was like, why is, why is Woods wearing that belt? Yeah, yeah. So he's now one. He's now a, a he's now, he's been, he was a former TNA world champion because he was brought in just randomly there, but he didn't win the belt, right? And now he's a WWE world, world champion, but he didn't win the match to win the belt. So he's the, I think he's the only guy to do that, which I think is yeah. quite strange. Just a little bit of a factoid there for you guys. Um, obviously, this will, there will be a rematch between New Day and um, Kid and Cesaro. And I tell you what, as much as all the things I said about in the New Day, this turn is going just as good as I as I hoped it would so far. It's going really well, actually. It, it is. It is. I have to say. And their match at Extreme Rules, go back and listen to that, was my match of the night. I thought it was fucking good. Very good. It was very good. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm up for that. If you these, if you've got a good match, I'm up for seeing that. If you've got like a rivalry that the the first match is kind of crap, and WWE wants to make it into a three match series, that's the shit I have a problem with. But yeah, do I want to see Biggie? Uh, you know, sorry, New Day against Cesaro and Kid again? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't said I yeah, want I'm to see the that. new. I haven't said I wanted to see the New Day more since they fucking debuted. So this is yeah, good. It's, it's it still feels a bit dirty almost. Yeah, it doesn't sound right, but it is. You know, fact is that. 
this is natural this is natural evolution right that they're they're gimmickal shit and it didn't work and it didn't go over the fans and now they've gone heel and now it is working this is them not fighting it right they don't this like is it. it's like they're they're almost naturally letting it just go its course yeah it's organic in that sense right which is something that WWE doesn't really like to let do, but with these lesser pro- lesser stuff, obviously they just let it fly. But this, at the moment, it just seems like it's ticking along at a nice pace. You know? Yeah. There we are. So, Ryback versus Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas has been in three shows back to back to back. Wow. He must be delighted. Even it's shocking. Nikki. Do you know what this part is? It's like, it, just more and more. Like, ever since Bo started growing the beard, I was like, he definitely is his brother. Like, his, his brother's, brother's, brother's brother, yeah. His brother's brother, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, the fact like, is, originally, it's like, nah, not so much. And then sort of growing it in, it's like, well, actually. Yeah, <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Suddenly, you, you, see, you see him in a certain line, it's like, whoa. So, yeah, yeah, we'll get it's that. Like skinny wire. <laughs> skinny wire, yeah. Um... It's almost like Bo's going to become the Herald. <laughs> the Herald, like the Prophet, you know, yeah. something along those lines, yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, tell you what, even though he's been dicked on, basically, for, like, three shows back-to-back, this is still good for Bo, because he hasn't been involved in anything. So, yeah. he comes out anyway, he gives Ryback the opportunity to leave, and Ryback says, uh, no, I'll just beat you again. So, he beats him the second time in two nights, and it still is a good few weeks for, 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 for Bo. Um... So while Ryback is celebrating, as as we were talking about his brother, seems like he pissed off the elder brother. So Bray Wyatt attacks him from yeah. out of the shadows, and Ryback is the guy that he's been talking about all this time. And I tell you what, I tell you what, I don't fucking care. Yeah, I tell you what, Ryback's going to win this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he will. I think I think obviously I I I think that Bray will win this rivalry. Much to the point of what we were making on earlier, but it's just a little bit like, oh, really? Like, why are you going after Ryback? Like, it makes no sense. Why? <laughs> there just seems to be no fucking reason why Riot does the things he does, and he talks a lot, and there's still no reason why. So, there we go. John Cena versus Heath Slater, and in quote marks, I say not really because the match didn't really start. Cena say, comes out and says that Rusev has his respect because the man refuses to quit. And, um, of course, Cena loves Rusev not wanting to, to quit. I'll tell you what, Cena l- smelled that push that Rusev had. Oh, it must have been so tasty, he just can't get enough of it. He just wants to keep oh, eating it. Oh, it's so fragrant. Yeah. I must have it. It was a year-long push, and now he's just nom, 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 just eating it all up. He, he must be fucking loving it right now. Yeah, it's a little bit crap. They will be having a fourth match. Rus- he, um, Cena says that Rusev will get the beating of a lifetime. For the fourth time, and says that he'll never surrender, and at payback it will be the final chapter of Cena. This isn't even the rubber match or anything. This is. I remember what I said before Rusev went in that last match at Extreme Rules. I said after this match, Rusev better get the fuck out of Cena's airspace. Well, obviously he didn't fly out quick enough because he's having another match. He's gonna get beaten again. And part of the thing that we're gonna that we talked about on the Extreme Rules review is that it seemed to me. Far too feasible that Rusev was going to lose that match for a guy who only, has only lost one match. Yeah. It just seemed like, oh, he's going to lose this one. Should be thinking that way, really, about a guy who went a whole year unbeaten. So that is a little bit of a shame. But uh, so Slater comes out. He says, "I'm going to be the new U.S. champion of the world." That line is enough for Rusev just to kick him in the head and get rid of him. It's like. What do you mean, of the world? Yeah, it, kick. yeah. <laughs> he just kicks his head off, and I'm sure that his body will catch up to his head somewhere in the next in the next show or something along those lines. Yeah. Lana also comes out, gets cheered like a massive face, and is obviously promptly sent away. And talking of that, right? Um, a lot of people may be drawing similarities with this Lana thing because obviously now it looks like she's getting more face than she's heel. She, isn't, she hasn't yeah. blasted the I US. Mean, the worst part is, I know you and me were both guilty of it at, like, Roar of London, Roaring in London, where it's just like, Lana's on the stage talking. Lana! Lana! Yeah. <laughs> oh, something just happened in the ring. Lana! Lana! Lana. Lana. Yeah, so just kept chanting for Lana, yeah. <laughs> um, i tell you what, this is very reminiscent of, and it's quite funny because it was actually featured on the Jerry Springer Too Hot for TV, which they... they, they oh, you watched that? Yeah, I did watch it. Um, 
It is very reminiscent of the Sable angle. And if you remember what happened there, Sable was with Mark Mero, and it came to a point that no one wanted to see, you know, Mero, they wanted to see Sable. Sable, yeah. So, who she doesn't want to see the big, who doesn't want to see the titty blonde? Yeah. I mean, like, um, she got cheered to high heaven, and, you know, Mer- they eventually did the storyline of Mero just being like, I don't even want you around, I'm sending you out, out of the back, and you're taking all the spotlight, and you're a bitch, and all this lot. It's very reminiscent of that, just obviously in the PG space, and done. Yeah. It. So, you can expect, down the line, either one or two things will happen, Lana will be a ruse all along, and she would have, like, you know, helped Rusev win a rivalry, or something along those lines. Or, she will split from Rusev. And she will start doing her own thing as a face. What she does with that, not sure, but... Uh, yeah, especially considering as a face, but not as a face manager. Well, not, like, it would have to be as a face manager, sorry, but not as like as a talent. It's like, because she's unfit to compete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I don't mind her being a face manager. It will be, be a lot... She's done the same deal now for a while. She would have I'd to learn how to do who face she, who it could go. Yeah. Well, who she, yeah, who is she going to go with? That's the interesting thing, though, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, no, I'm interested. Fair enough. If they want to go with this, it does seem to me that it does reek of this is just a swerve and everything's fine with them. It, yeah. But it kind of makes no I sense. Mean, everything's, considering... everything's fine with them at the end of the day. Considering that apparently she's cost him two matches in a row, it's just a little bit like if it was a ruse all along, it's like, well, why did you cost him yeah. two matches? But it just makes no sense. So. If they do do that, it will make no sense. If if it's Lana going face and she's going to go off on her own, it does leave Rusev in a really bad space. He's lost all these matches, lost his belt, and now he's lost his woman. Yeah. <laughs> Been a bad cut, man. He's getting the Bray Wyatt treatment from last year. You know, he loses <laughs> his match against Cena, and suddenly he loses all of his mates, and it's like, oh, you know, he's on his own. I'm all alone. Yeah. Oh, well. uh, so Kane is backstage after that. Rollins talks to him. He wants clarification on the title match that he spoke to about earlier on. And we basically get between them the argument that we've had for basically the last four weeks between these two guys. They just can't fucking stop it. They should probably have sex and make up at this point. So yeah, Just um, get it over with. It's, yeah. Um, it's funny. I think it's really funny when you've got Rollins threatening to tell Triple H and Stephanie while they're not there about Kane's actions. As if the show isn't, one, public, and you didn't expect the guys in charge to at least watch what's going on while they're not there. This is one thing I just find almost ridiculous because it's like almost it is a proper spoil to coin the term that Kane keeps using, but spoil Brax. It's still it really is just like how, man, he's not playing nice. He's being made. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Uh, yeah, it's um, but I just think it's so funny. It's just like oh, I'll I'll tattle tell on you, and it's like, but the show's public and you can watch it. And it's on live television. And That's it. So, yeah. Anyway, um, Kane announces that the choice is what the choices would be for them for the match. We've already gone through that as well um, in regards to that. Next, uh, King of the Ring, first round match. R-Truth versus Stardust. And here we go, Matt. We're going to talk about this. R-Truth says that if he wins the, 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 the King of the Ring match, uh, you know, and the King of the Ring, tournament sorry yeah then he will ban all spiders that's what yep. he'll do and he went on quite a rant about how he would get rid of the spiders and i honestly hoped in that moment in time and i know this was me just wishing just so hard that stardust suddenly would gain cosmic powers and, and grow it, eight legs no that he would just warp truth into the galactic void and he would just stay there that's yeah. what's best for business. And he so, can stay there with all the spiders the and tomato, uh, fucking, sorry, tomatoes, fucking potatoes that he wants. Yeah. There you go. So, but obviously that didn't just happen. Just canvas sacks full of potatoes and spiders. Yeah, yeah. You just leave them out there in the void. Just let them, let them float out there. This is a short match. It's it's all right, I guess. Uh, the the guys used the time as best they could, um, so that's a, a plus for both of them. Our truth beats Stardust, and um, as I said, no cosmic evaporation. So sad. Tony is sad. Yeah. Aww. Everyone still, go. Aww. Our truth still exists on our plane. That's it. That's it. Fandango versus Adam Rose was next. A lot of matches back to back here, actually. Um, I am. Can't, some, I'm not saying I'm crazy for it, but I am digging the Fandango face turn. 
fair enough. It's something new. I know it won't come up to much, but it's new. It gets the fans involved. It, it's okay. Um, they have a little bit of a match here. Rosa then gives the distraction for Adam Rose to win what I think is his first match on Raw in what seems like forever. So Definitely feels like it. So he seems all happy, all happy with that. Rosa takes the mic, and I'm like, <laughs> but it wasn't that bad. Uh, she says that she can't believe that Fandango chose us, the fans, over her. And I say, why not? We're less needy. We can dance on command. Some of us can actually wrestle. We're a far better choice for Fandango. Fuck off. That's it. Bitch. Fandango's our oh, man now. Hell no. He's our man, and he'll dance for us when we want him to. Okay? No one talks to our man like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm going a bit too far with that, but you oversassed it. Oversassed it. <laughs> Something that hasn't been said on this show before. So uh, she says that she's found someone better in Adam Rose, and then kisses him and whatever. And all I can think of kisses is... him. She practically rapes his <laughs> face. She does essentially. Yeah, just it's a little bit. More... She didn't molest him as much as let's say Dana Brooke molests herself on NXT. So there, Ooh, there is that. Oh, I don't know. It's close. Awfully close. It is awfully close, yeah. It's like at the moment when they're just like, oh, it's time to cut to commercial. And she's like pinned him to the floor. It's like, <laughs> fucking hell. I tell you what, though. Here's I thought thing. we were past live sex shows. <laughs> live sex shows, yeah. Um, well, she was watching, wearing much more clothing than Lita was during that time. But still, maybe that's for the better. I'd, I'd much rather see Lita in that, in that situation than Rosa. Just my personal opinion. Yeah. One thing I will say about Rosa, she doesn't exactly pick men with stellar win-loss records. Yeah. That's the one thing I will say about her, so. But then, maybe she'll work the opposite for him, for Adam Rose, because, like, he's hardly on a winning streak, so hot, so maybe she'll counter that. Do you honestly believe like, that? like, Los Matadores were doing okay. Then she came along. <laughs> and screwed it. I think I'm stretching too far. I don't think Rosa's going to change shit. So, well, it's it's Rosa Mendes. It's it's Rosa. All Mendes. right, yeah. Was it? She's been with the company eight years. <laughs> Two of them because she was off in rehab. <sighs> the improvement. Oh, the improvement in um in in Rosa Mendes is something to behold. I always feel disgusted in myself with the fact that I can just turn around and say, hell, even Eva Marie's improved more. Mm. Isn't that bad? We're going to have to talk, we're going to dig on Rosa more than Eva Marie now. So even fact, we still... haven't even mentioned that at all on this podcast. It's because I'm not sold by it. No? I want to see her wrestle a match. You can do, listen, right, you can record tons of stuff and her practicing, but yeah. there's a guy there with a phone probably waiting for the perfect shot of her doing a suplex and not filming the mistake she's making. It's all picked okay, stuff. Yeah. And let's face it, right? She can do suplexes on a Brian Kendrick who will do most of the work for her with his with his own body. Doing an actual good match and having the psychology of it, that's something that you need to learn that you just can't get. You know, you need to okay, watch a lot of yeah. matches, have passion. I don't think she has that. I don't think she ever will. But Still, I tell you what, I don't want to talk too much about her until she actually wrestles in the ring. Show us what you can do. We will be open-minded at Eva Marie's next match, but I I will say to people, don't get your fucking hopes up, because just because you saw her do one good suplex or one good crossbody doesn't mean that it didn't have 1,000 fuck-ups, yeah? Or it wasn't done with Brian Kendrick basically doing the flips for her, you know? And all those lines, so. To all the work. Yeah. Um... Moving forward, Bree speaks to Renee Young, Bree uh, Bella, of course, about Daniel Bryan's injury. She doesn't really give no reason to went anything to why he'll be back or anything like that. But it says that Bryan will be back because he loves the WWE so much. I think he loves wrestling that much. He's not like WWE, you know, like John Cena is like, oh, I don't love wrestling, but I love the WWE or that kind of crap. So, so. Yeah. Uh, Naomi then essentially kind of interferes and very gently just kind of pushes her over very gently like, and, oh no let yeah. me stroke you to the ground yeah it's essentially yeah rosa mendez tackled adam rose to the ground with more intensity <laughs> so um she says that no one cares about brian aubrey and this is probably the least physical conflict i've ever seen so there we are so this obviously leads to the match that we have uh, going next, which is um, Brie herself against Naomi. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Naomi's Nelsie now, as you saw from the pay-per-view, she's sporting her new entrance music. She's got colour-changing boots, all all different stuff. Do you know what the worst, the weirdest thing is? I didn't even notice the colour-changing boots at <laughs> Extreme Rules. It's because they didn't change that much, though, did they? They they were the same colour for the majority of the match. Oh, one, I, was, I was pretty sure, because I'm pretty sure I heard them mention that the boots were changing colour, but every time I looked, they were green. Oh. So it's like, oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I tell you one thing is that I'm glad that they changed the entrance theme at the very least because the Brodus Clee theme would not work over the heel turn. So uh, yeah. I'm glad that they changed. I really it. heal funkers on a roll. Yeah, I mean it barely what? it barely worked anyway after Brodus left. Let's be honest. So I'm glad they've changed it eventually and that theme is gone. So this match uh, is is decent except for the end of it, in which Naomi wins the match with probably the ugliest looking cradle I've seen in a while. Um, yeah, but she did impress for the majority of the match, so I will say that. But uh, she's now obviously going to move on. She will have another title shot. I do imagine she would eventually win the belt. Um, maybe, obviously, they're drawing this out a little bit longer, but I do imagine she will. I kind of feel like she deserves the belt. Who Naomi? I think she yes. deserves to run more than anyone on that run. Yeah, you can't, you can't say that and say, oh, if she doesn't deserve the belt, then there's not a lot many on there that do. That's the that's the thing with her. So. Anyway, Dean Ambrose versus Sheamus, King of the Ring, first round. I genuinely laughed out loud with the Foghorn Leghorn chants that were going on during this match. I say, I say, I genuinely laughed out loud. I laughed out loud when I say I say, I say. Um, this match is okay. It's good. Um, physical, as you would expect with these two yeah. guys. You've got Ambrose and Sheamus. You expect a physical brawl between them. Um... Ziggler comes out in the midway. He causes the DQ win for Sheamus by attacking him, which means Ziggler is a fucking idiot because he gave um, Sheamus a free win. Yeah. If I were Ambrose, I would kick Ziggler's ass all the way back to Chicago. The worst part is apparently, like, they've talked it out and it's all okay. It's like, really? Does Ambrose seem like the talking it out type to you? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would, that's what I would argue with it, to be honest, but. Still. So I'm pretty sure he mentioned it on like the um, the king of the king of the ring final. I was like, oh yeah, and I've spoke to Ambrose, and he understands. Like, yeah, okay, he yeah, understands. Sure. You cost me a match. I'm gonna fucking punch you. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have an issue with Ambrose coming out and decking Ziggler. Ziggler, Ziggler, yeah. came, Ziggler came off looking like a bit of an idiot. Really, that's it. Yeah. It's like I spoke to Ambrose, and he understands. Well, he understood me. Yeah, of course he understood you. He speaks English as well. Yeah. Doesn't mean he understood why you did what you did. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes it seem like Seamus got what he wanted all the way through. It's just fucking Without stupid. Without getting, even trying yeah, to get exactly. what he wanted. Yeah, I mean, he, all he did was distract Ziggler. Could Ziggler have not done the same? No, he had to attack. I mean, I know Ziggler did that in the end anyway, in the King of the Ring, but come on. You know, he could have done it earlier. Not do over one of your mates, Ambrose. I mean, come on, that's just, that's just shitty and that's it. Anyway, Damien Sandow, he's in the ring. He's explaining that his original gimmick was said by management not to be entertaining enough. I wonder if uh, WWE found Cesaro not entertaining enough. And I find yeah. the, the word entertaining to be a bit of an annoying fucking word. Especially when it's used in that, fa- in that fashion. Anyway, he shows it's all the... entertaining. Really? Mm. I'm liking it. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are liking it. All the crowd are liking it. No, it's not entertaining. It doesn't matter if we like it, Matt. It's whether it's entertaining enough. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's true. So, Somehow. Still, that's fucking ridiculous. Anyway. He then shows all the costumes he's used over the, uh, the last 18 months or so. He says that he's lost the respect of his peers, but he's gained the respect of the fans in turn. And I like these, this promo because it was uh, it felt real and, and, and somewhat genuine. There was a lot of genuine to it, yeah. yeah. It did. I could get behind this version of Sandow, a very real Sandow. I didn't like what he did afterwards, however, which is basically copy everything that Curtis Axel did. And he imitated everything, and, and the segment went just a little bit too long, in my opinion. As, as it, when it started out, I was like, oh, okay, I could kind of buy into this. This is kind of funny. Yeah. And then, and then it's like, no, it's just getting yeah. and then it weird. Was, and then you just kept doing it. and uh, Then it got awkward. Yeah. And then it's just like, no, I want him to shut up. Yeah. yeah. So I hope I hope Sandow's new thing isn't that he just imitates anyone. That would be really, yeah. really bad. I'm a stunt double without anyone to double for. <laughs> yeah, so he's just going to do it to everyone, regardless of whether they want it or not. No, I don't want that for him. He's better than that. And at very least, if he has shown that he's entertaining enough, I mean, fucking word, 
entertaining enough, then WWE should at least give him a chance. Again, because he is good. He is good. Yeah. Um, they have a brawl. Sandow comes out the better, and that's pretty much it for there. But I did like the start of Sandow's promo. I like I could get behind that version of it. The thing is, I quite like it. It was another one of those promos where it's like it, where it's so heartfelt and genuine that you're like, this is really good. Yeah. Like it sort of goes back to that Ryback one. That's the one I was going to say. Yeah, the Ryback one that he did ages ago, where he talked about him growing in the WWE and all that. Yeah, or sort of like you, you, the one where he showed his scar and that. Mm. Yeah. I thought it was excellent. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Because at the moment, these guys feel like every word they say is scripted. And when they talk about what their genuine feelings, it makes guys like me feel like, okay, I can get behind this guy because he's not just speaking in a script. He's speaking about himself. I can get that. I, I yeah. can understand that. So, yeah. Now, I hope they do more like that. So I hope Sandow becomes the guy who does this more often because I would really enjoy that. I don't want him to be... They showed the two sides of him here. They showed the side of him that they book and they want him, oh, he's, oh look, he's imitating, oh, isn't that so funny? And they booked the side of him that I'm like, okay, awesome. This is what you feel. This is what drives you. This is what you want to accomplish. This is the, the troubles that you've had. Okay, I'm listening. I want to know. I, yeah. I want to know more about what you've had to go through. I want to know what you want to do from here on out, how hard you're going to try. All of that's gold, but still. Uh, I do hope they do have a plan for Sandow. At least he got time in the ring in his own segment. That's a good thing, at least. So, hopefully, at least he gets more of that. Bray Wyatt has a backstage cryptic promo, and I tuned out, which is scary in of itself. He yeah, has a little bit. Poignant line there. Especially as he, you're, it seemed like this was a little bit out of place, that he attacked Ryback earlier on the show, and then had the promo later. It seems like it In fact, I don't even remember what it consisted of. And I think that's a problem. Yeah, you because know, I was the same. I tuned out of it. Because I, I like... I, like I love promos. Wyatt promos, and I'm really struggling. Yeah. I like Wyatt's style of promo, but the problem is now it's so toothless. You know, it's it's without any sort of consequence. So I tune out of it now. It's, real, it's a dying shame. But still, what can you do? Neville yeah. versus Harper... The last first round match of the King of the Ring. Booker T wins the award for the stupidest and most insensitive line of the week. Are you ready? Did you catch this one, Matt? Did you catch it? You might not have. I think I did, but I can't remember what it was. There is one thing that came to mind. I was like, oh. You're probably thinking the same thing I did. I will state it now. He stated, JBL said oh, something about Owen Hart and... Yes. Booker T pushed it forward of, well, Owen Hart can't defy gravity like Neville. And I sunk my head into my hands and I was like, Booker, Booker T, come on, come on. Fix you, it, fix you, it, fix you, it. You're, you're <laughs> going to realise what the fuck you just said in about two seconds. And I remembered then that I did say that his mouth is two seconds ahead of his brain and I hate being proved correct. Yes. That was a fucking really bad line to say. And I heard he has apologised since then. Um, he he didn't mean it, guys. Come on, it's just that he he said it without thinking, which unfortunately yeah. happens a lot. Um, and it's just a really shitty line to come out with. Um, for this week, Booker T gets that. Normally, it's JBL who wins that, but fucking hell, Booker T, that was the wrong word to say at the wrong time. Uh, the wrong thing to say at the wrong time. It was it was pretty. Didn't bad. add up at all. It's just sort of like. Owen Hart's like, no, no, the moment this is, the moment he went, Owen, just like, no. I was like, no, I know where he's going with this. And I was like, it's too late, it's done. And then you could hear the sort of awkwardness and all that. Lot. That's that sort of moment where you think, you could, like, you know that you had just, just JBL and Cole just looking at him going, the fuck? What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> and it's like, okay, how do we change this? And then they kind of carried on as they as best they could. So, But he has it, like I said, I don't, I'm not going to dig on Booker too much. It was a stupid line, and it does reaffirm what I've said before, that his mouth is two seconds ahead of his brain. But yeah. you could be like JBL and not have your mouth connected to your brain, so it could be worse. It could be worse. Uh, really good match, this one. Really good match in terms of what Neville has to do in terms of becoming a success, he's not put a foot wrong. It's all down how management chooses to use him. But Neville's done everything he needs to. So, good on him. You know, he's impressed each week, done all of his moves, hasn't 
botched a single single he hasn't botched a single fucking movie yet. clean yeah i mean you think with his move set he should be a lot more risky but everything looks like it's just in the place it needs to be so and that's what you get for wrestling as much as he has you know it's just the way it is i'd say well did you watch that match that i posted up on twitter no i haven't yet but i would oh. i did, I did oh. know it, so. oh <laughs> And that's before that's that's him with with um, lesser experience. So it's 2012. Yeah, but I mean he's had three years since then. So that's yeah, that's cool. Um, Neville does get the win here, and um, he is starting to get a few victories under his belt now. So and against stellar talent, he beat Barrett. He's now beating Harper um, on at King of the Ring. It's not exactly a spoiler that he did beat Sheamus. These are big wins, right? Yeah. So he's back on track now. He was losing all those matches. He lost his first three matches or whatever. Now nah, this is fine. This is good. No, I'm I'm okay with this now. He's he's fine. He wasn't getting it, those three losses that he had. Things weren't bad then. It's just that I was afraid that WWE were going to be like, oh, this guy is really great, but he can't win a match, and they're going to do a storyline along those lines. I'm glad they're not doing that. So, um, yeah, good for good for Neville. Not so much for Booker T. Shall we say that was yeah. Probably one of, the, one of the worst lines I've heard in a while, but still. The main event, Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton, uh, oh sorry, and Randy Orton versus Kane and Seth Rollins. And man, if I uh, tuned out in that Bray Wyatt promo, I did fucking tune out of this match as well. I didn't really care that much about what actually happened. No, I didn't really pay much attention to this one at all. Mm, I kind of tuned out at that point. That's the third hour of Raw though. The third hour of Raw is a bit like, ugh, I'm exhausted. And especially this week where I had to watch it all in one go. Jesus yeah, well, we've Christ. had to binge on wrestling. Yeah, um, it it was exhausting. In, and that's really, really a bad word to say, isn't it, really? But, uh, yeah, I didn't really care too much. Rollins does cause a mistake. He kicks Kane, accidentally dives into him on the outside. Kane then... Oh, I just that, that looked... The thing is, I looked at that, I was like... I could almost call that a botch from Rollins. So it was like he hit Kane. It's like he barely hit anyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like, it's just like, like he fell himself. short. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it was a, it was alright. It was I, to be honest. Like I said, I tuned out at that point. So I was be like, oh, I don't really care. <laughs> Which is even worse, I think. Really. Yeah. Kane throws Rollins back into uh, Reigns and Orton, which, as you know means he's going to get punched by Reigns and RKO'd by Orton, and the faces win the match. That's it. Kane seems happy with that. He shows the result of the poll, which is, surprise, surprise, dun, 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 a triple threat match. Triple threat. Yeah, that's it. And uh, like I said, I was bored for huge parts of this match. Well, that's quite a bad thing to say, but I was. That's the bottom line of it. So that's Raw this week. All in all, a fairly mediocre show. It had a few things to... Give us a few fucking really annoying annoying things as well. Um, the third hour was really hard to get through without splitting it up into two bits, which is what I normally do each week. Um, and literally, by the, I when Raw ended, I was happy for it to be end. I wanted it to end. And that you shouldn't want a show to end. When I watch Game of Thrones, I know it's only an hour long, but come on, you... WWE like to you know compare themselves to these sort of shows. I was going to say how many times has JBL meant, made a JBL um, no has JBL made a JBL comment? Yeah, uh, JBL made a Thrones comment. Yeah, exactly. So you know when when Game of Thrones ends, I don't. I'm not like oh, I'm glad that ended. I'm like when's the next fucking episode coming out? Yeah, with with Raw this week, I was like oh, fucking hell, will this ever end? Jesus, three hours each week. <sighs> I know I say it each week, but come on, guys, you must feel it as well. Our fans must feel it. So. The worst part is, is, like, do you not think, um, like, part of the problem, because we weren't there. So it's, it's like I find it really difficult, like, I try to find a better way to sort of... Word it. Word it. Yeah. It's like, I think it's another one of those things where, now that we've seen, like, a, on the receiving end of a live show, mm. um... I think whether it was bad or good, just being there is something completely different. Sort of like, you say three hours, it's like we happily sat through all of that rule. Yeah, but I mean, obviously a live show is going to be much more different. Um, yeah. And because you're more invested in the show, I'm not going to sit there in my house and shout out and chant all the time and and all that, all that lot. The fact is that, and also part of it goes down to as well the way that WWE portrays the show on screen, you know, or actually to viewers, you know, on a television set. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, three hours. Uh, I mean, technically, we were there for four hours because we had superstars, superstars taping. Yep. Um, 
I've watched those tapings recently. Yeah, yeah. Did, did they, they were they on YouTube? Were they edited or? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, mate, they were on YouTube, so yeah, a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, did WWE edit it? Edit the things they probably did. So. I think so. They always do for superstars and SmackDowns. So. Um, but anyway, our thoughts on this Raw, like I said, the third hour just just killed it for me, and um, it was a bit of a mediocre show. But that's we, I think it's a missable Raw. Yeah, it is missable. Yeah, I think our, our rating is: should you go and kill yourself out to go and watch it? Very rarely do we say yes. It's not that this week. It was you could miss this quite easily, and you would be fine. To be honest, you could watch The King and the Ring the night after, which is what we did, and that's got better action and in-ring wrestling and arguably better promos. So, yeah, you know, and that's just a one-hour show, and that was quite easy to digest. So, there we are. So we're going to King of the Ring. We'll talk about it in there. Our new King of the Ring is Bad News Barrett. He does beat Neville in the finals to become the King of the Ring. And, uh, yeah, i tell you what I liked about this, and we were just talked about it a little bit there, we're only going to talk about it a little bit now, but it was a, I thought it was a fun hour of wrestling that had some good matches on it, and uh, had a few good promos. We even got and, off showca- first... and showcase quite a bit of good, um, like, proper chance for the talent, though. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it was our first Neville promo that we had on this, was on, was on King of the Ring, so, he had his own promo, there was a few good ones from Barrett that he showed there, um, R-Truth talking all the fucking gibberish he likes to do because it's R-Truth um, but still I thought it was I thought all in all it was a um, a cool one hour to watch and like I said so much more digestible than yeah. than, than Raw is so. much easier yeah. go out and watch it guys honestly you, you'll like it I know we just told you to finish there but you'll know it anyway I got spoiled this morning as soon as I went onto Facebook but I'm used to that Yeah. Um, but yeah I, I, I enjoyed King of the Ring more than I did Raw so that's just my general thoughts on that. Is there anything else you want to cover this week before we wrap up? Uh, no. It's been a lengthy ass podcast, shall we say, that we've done this week. So, thank you guys for sticking around with us for, for the the length of the podcast. Uh, myself and Matt are absolutely fucking knackered, so we're going to go and enjoy the rest of our week. Uh, if you do have any questions, like I said, you can leave them in the comment section below. You can also tweet us at Talk Wrestle Pod. and uh, you can ask us any questions there. You can send us videos. Um, uh, like like we got sent this week, which was which was cool. Um, I'm super fan. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, if you uh, are new to the show, then hit that subscribe button. You know, you'll be part of the almost 300 uh, subscribers that we have on this channel. We're growing steadily uh, every every day, yeah, which is awesome. That's it. Um, and we we are hoping to hit 300 you know, somewhat soon. That would be that would be really cool. Um, and in two episodes time this is episode 73 so to, um, the next week's episode is the last with this background and everything like that episode 75 episode so it's going to really change around a bit yeah that'll be exciting won't it? so yeah lots of stuff to get uh, to, uh, to be excited about except it's kind of payback but we'll make it fun for you regardless uh, we hope you have a great week we hope that you, uh, you did enjoy this week's show and uh, we thank you all for the support apart from that we will let you go and uh, we'll catch you all next week We'll see you soon. Thanks a lot now. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.